Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jay Elliott here and welcome back to another video. All right, so some of you probably already know that BeeMaker 3 just released an update the other day. So in this video, I'm just gonna do a quick overview of the new update and also go over some of the new features. So some of the new features that was included within the new update is adding MIDI drop to pads, adding relative options for tempo focus actions, adding explicit tap tempo focus action, adding undo slash redo focus action, fix missing samples issue when editing samples, and fix Ableton Sync. All right, so as you can see here, I have a session loaded up and I'm going to show you uh, some quick examples on how to use the MIDI drop to pads feature within BeeMaker 3. So as you can see, I have my session loaded up here. I don't have anything in the sequence window. I just have a pattern that I created within this Sheffield kit, which is featured in the on deck pack from MSX Sound Design. So if I hit play, I just have a basic drum loop. Now let's say I wanted to add a hi-hat pattern to this drum loop. So on this pad over here is a hi-hat and I'm going to drop and load a MIDI file slash pattern that I created onto this pad here. So I have lazy hi-hat fast and then lazy hi-hat medium. So let's load lazy hi-hat medium onto this hi-hat pad and I'll hit play. And as you can see, the hi-hat MIDI pattern has been added to this pattern here, pattern number six. Now, if I want to load a different MIDI pattern, so now let's load up lazy hi-hat fast and I'll drop it in here and I'll hit play. And that's pretty much it. So basically any type of MIDI files or MIDI patterns that you have, you can drag and drop to any pad that has a sound already loaded on it. So you have to make sure that there's a sound loaded on the pad before loading your MIDI file or MIDI pattern onto the pad. So because I already had a pattern already created within this kit, which is pattern number six, whenever I drag and drop a MIDI pattern onto the pad, it'll add to the existing pattern that's already selected here. So let's say for example, I don't have a pattern already created within this kit. So I'll just delete that. And now if I go ahead and load this MIDI pattern onto this pad, it just automatically creates a new pattern within the drop down menu where all your patterns are. So if I hit play, and then I can go ahead and switch it out for another MIDI pattern. So let's go ahead and undo that. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and drop this pattern into the sequencer, go to play song, and there you go. So even though I've already dragged and dropped this pattern into the sequencer, I can still go ahead and change out those MIDI notes for the hi-hats if I wanted to. So once again, I'll go back to the pads and I'll just have to make sure that pattern six is selected because pattern six is what's inside the sequencer here. So pattern six is selected. All right, so let's hear what hi-hat is here first. So that's lazy hi-hat fast. Now let's put lazy hi-hat medium. Go back to the sequence window and go to play song. And as you can see and hear, the new MIDI pattern is loaded onto pattern number six. And then once again, if you want to switch it out, just make sure the pattern's selected and then drag and drop any desired MIDI file that you want onto that specific pad. So, fast, medium, So I'm just going to show you another quick example. I'm just going to mute this hi-hat here. And I have another bank with different hi-hats. And let's load the MIDI pattern onto this hi-hat pad and hear what that sounds like. All 
All right, so let's load up the medium one. And as you can see here, it created a new pattern. Let's say I wanted both the slow and fast hi-hat pattern inside the uh, pattern menu here. So all I got to do is just create a new pattern. And as you can see, pattern one is the slow hi-hat MIDI pattern. And now if I go to pattern number two, I'll go fast. So now I have the fast pattern on pattern number two and I have the slow pattern on pattern number one. And basically I could just toggle between these two now. And then I can just drag and drop that into the sequencer. Go play song. I'll make sure this is on play song too. There you go. And since I had both of those patterns already loaded up as a pattern here inside my drop down menu, I can just pick and choose which pattern I want to use for the hi hat now. Maybe the first couple bars I want the slow. And then now I want the fast pattern. So let's repeat. Oops. So let's repeat that and then loop this. And... So that's pretty much it. That's how you use the MIDI drop to uh, pad feature within Beatmaker 3. Very simple, but extremely useful, especially for those who may have already like um, MIDI file packs for different chord progressions or, or things like this for hi-hats or for drums. So it just makes it super simple for you to drag and drop different patterns onto different sounds on the uh, pads within Beatmaker 3. But once again, in order for it to work, you have to make sure that there's a sound loaded onto the pad before you actually drag and drop the MIDI file onto the pad. So I'm just going to show you another quick example. I have here the uh, Road Toad instrument from the On Deck pack from MSX Sound Design. And if you haven't checked out that pack yet, make sure you check it out in the Beatmaker 3 Sound Store because it is super dope. All right, so I'm going to go ahead now and load a chord progression onto this pad. And let's hear what we've got. All right, so that's pretty much it for the MIDI drag and drop feature onto a pad. Now let's quickly check out the new MIDI focus actions within the menu here. All right, so as you can see here, we have new MIDI focus actions for tempo, fine tempo, tap tempo, undo, and redo. This is something I've actually been waiting for for the longest time. The MIDI focus feature that I actually wanted the most was undo. I'm gonna tap that here and assign undo to this pad. So currently right now on my MIDI keyboard, I have this button to act as stop and I have play, play, record, record. And now I have this button here to act as undo. And yeah, let me just show you how useful it is because it just allows you to work a lot faster, especially if you're laying down a track and you mess up. All I gotta do is hit the undo button and then go ahead and start recording again. And you see, if I didn't like that take, all I gotta do is tap this button and let's go ahead and do it again. So yeah, super simple, but super useful. Another useful MIDI focus action that they added was uh, tempo, which I have assigned to this parameter slash knob here and I have fine tempo assigned to this parameter here. So now I'll hit play and then I'll use these two parameters here to change the tempo of the track. And then also you can assign tap tempo 
to a MIDI focus action and redo to a MIDI focus action. So I don't really use those two functions. So that's why I haven't assigned them. So that's pretty much it for the new updates. If you guys have any questions or if you need any help regarding any of the new features, just drop a comment below and let me know. And also drop another comment and let me know which features you would like to see in future Beatmaker 3 updates. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.